So that's sort of the basic definition. We got grandiosity, we got a need for admiration, and we've got a lack of empathy. But just like with antisocial personality disorder, there's criteria that must be met in order to actually say that somebody is a narcissist, right? Um, and there are nine different like criteria that we're looking for. And in order to even be like eligible to be diagnosed with narcissism, uh, you have to meet at least five of these. So word of caution, just like in the previous session, just because you may relate to one or you may see a few of these in yourself, it does not mean that you're a narcissist. It also does not mean that that person that you know that has some of these traits is an actual diagnosable narcissist or somebody with NPD, right? We're looking to have at least five of these. And remember, it has to be pervasive, kind of consistent, and often in multiple areas of life. So what are the criteria? The first one is a grandiose sense of self-importance. This is somebody who exaggerates their achievements um, or their talents. They expect to be recognized as superior uh, without even proper achievements, right? So somebody who doesn't have a medical degree, who expects to be taken as seriously as somebody like a licensed uh, doctor, right? Somebody who hasn't paid their dues or uh, earned those credentials that talks and speaks as if they are and expect to be taken as seriously as somebody on the level of like a licensed professional, right? Uh, and this is not just an expectation, this is a belief that's hold, held. So that's the first criteria is this grandiose sense of self-importance. The second is um, somebody who is preoccupied with fantasies. So preoccupied by this means it's on their mind pretty frequently. This can range from something that they sort of ruminate on with consistency to something that really consumes their life. Um, so they're preoccupied with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty, or ideal love. It doesn't have to be all of these. Sometimes it's just one. So we sometimes see this in the political realm. People get obsessed with power. We see this a lot in fame, like maybe in Hollywood, where people get obsessed with like fame or in the beauty industry with beauty or that ideal love that gets really fantasized that we see perpetuated by something like a rom-com, right? So a narcissist, somebody with NPD, has preoccupation with this. They are fixated or ruminating on success or wealth or beauty or love or power um, in some capacity, in some setting. The third one is that they believe that they are special or unique. And I don't mean like you were raised being told you were special or unique and you understand that you are a unique individual and special. I mean, truly set apart in such a manner that they believe that they can only be understood um, or should only associate with others that are special or more often high status like them. So these are people that believe that they are special or unique to the level that they judge others, they look down upon others, they are very um, exclusive. Exclusive. They're very careful about who they associate with, and they tend to think that they belong with like a tier of people that match them. So they might not give somebody the time of day if they think that they are beneath them, and they may expect to hear from somebody that, let's say somebody's really famous or something, and they expect them to engage with them because they also think that they're like that. So that's the third one. The fourth one is that they require, and this is a big big emphasis on require, uh, excessive admiration, right? They're very, very sensitive to criticism. We'll talk about why in a little bit. And so when we say they require excessive admiration, we don't just mean like they like lots of compliments or their like love language or words of affirmation. We mean that like the bar is so high and so tight that even a compliment not delivered right or not in excess is like a critique to them. They sort of expect to be praised or worshipped. We see a lot of narcissism among cults and cult leaders for that reason, right? Yeah, sounds like the cl clicks in high school. Yeah, there there is um, a lot of research that shows that teenagers can sort of exhibit 
narcissistic traits during that time of development, the vast majority do not develop narcissistic personality disorder. Um, and that's why we don't d diagnose teenagers um, with it because there's a whole different host of things going on there. Um, okay, so the I think we're on the fifth one. Uh, one, two, three, four, yeah, five. Uh, they have a sense of entitlement. This And by entitlement, we mean, we mean unreasonable expectations of favorable treatment or automatic compliance, right? So this sense of entitlement that they have makes them feel like they are owed either complete obedience and compliance. So we see this in the parenting world or in the professional world with certain like bosses or superiors. Um, or they have these unreasonable expectations about how they think they should be treated, right? So they don't think they should have to wait in line. They think should, they should get a table at that restaurant that's full. They think they should have um, this preferential treatment based upon absolutely nothing. And because that sense of entitlement is so strong that when things don't pan out that way, we can see really strong reactions. All right, the sixth one, um, and this is one that gets a lot of attention on things like social media and is talked about in the clinical world a lot, is they are interpersonally exploitive, right? So they take advantage of others to achieve their own ends. This is where we see um, a lot of talk happen because a lot of people have been hurt by this, right? Very transactional relationships. Uh, these are people who are in that dog eat dog world that will do whatever they can to get to the top. So when we look at it from like a professional standpoint in the business world and you hear of all these corrupt people who do whatever it takes to get to the top of the ladder or become, you know, really um, wealthy, right? they're exploiting others no matter no matter how much it harms others or or what a negative impact it has. They don't care in that way. Things are very transactional for them. Um, and this is because they're trying to reach a level of success or reputation. This is a really, really common one. Yeah, uh, moms that post their children on social media to get views. Um, th for sure, that could be something that is coming from that place, right? If they are wanting to be, we saw this with like the, the toddlers with tiaras show where a lot of parents were exploiting their children to try to achieve wealth and fame. Famous actors and musicians that were children, have a lot of them have talked about this later in life and that happening. That's an example of exploitation, of exploitation and that transactional sort of relationship and the damage that it can cause, for sure. All right, um, number seven <laughs> is they lack empathy. This is a big one. We talked about this one with the antisocial personality disorder as well. This is one that gets a lot of people confused. So I'm going to talk about empathy a little bit later. Um, but when I say they lack it, somebody with narcissistic personality disorder is basically incapable of it. This is them without help, right? Um, so they are unwilling or completely unable to recognize or identify with the feelings and needs of others. This is a really hard one for most people uh, because we tend to have some level of empathy. So the person that could watch somebody dying on the street or watch a child starving and do absolutely nothing or hear a horrific story of something somebody's been through and it doesn't even impact them in any way or they themselves are very hurtful in some way and a person is trying to express to them how what they did or said hurt them and it doesn't register, right? Because that's where the empathy part comes in and they lack that. Now, people that lack empathy can obviously be dangerous because when we are not able or unwilling to consider how our actions impact another, we sort of lose any sort of conscience on that uh, interaction, right? We, we aren't coming from a place of like morality or values or virtue. We aren't putting ourselves in somebody else's shoes. And so the criteria for which we're making decisions is very different than somebody with empathy, right? I, like I said, I'm gonna get into that one a little bit later. So that's the seventh one. Uh, the eighth one is that they're envious of others or they believe others are envious of them. 
this is one that doesn't actually get talked about very often. Um, and when it is discussed, a lot of people are sort of caught off guard because all of us to some degree envy another in some way, right? We might be jealous of somebody that has something that we want or envious of somebody that has it easier. That does not mean that you're narcissistic, but this is something that's pervasive with them, right? So their envy, because they have entitlement, often is riddled with disdain. It's not a sense of like, oh, I, I really wish I had what that person has. It's more temper tantrum-y of like, it's not fair that they have what I want. I deserve that, right? I am entitled to that. Um, and with this belief that others are envious of them, it speaks to a little bit of what we see with narcissistic personality disorder, and that is delusion, right? They were, will project onto others what they think people are thinking about them. So they may lead a terrible life or they may not do all that well, but still they'll think that people want to be them or want what they have. Um, if we're looking in the vein of something like beauty or looks, we'll see, we'll see this transpire. Well, people will say things like, everybody wants to look like me, right? Or everybody wants to be like me. And everybody else is like, what are you talking about? Right? So there's a little bit of delusion there, but it tends to be two sides of the same coin and they can have both or one or the other. So they can be envious and think others envy them or one or the other. And then the last criteria um, is that they very often showcase arrogant or haughty uh, behaviors or attitudes. So this can be them actually exemplifying very disdainful, superior, um, arrogant behaviors. Right now, that does not mean that within that they are cruel or violent, um, and I'm going to talk a bit about that in a second. But it's common to for them to showcase some of that. So that's the nine cri criteria. People need to have at least five of those. That's pervasive, right, throughout their life. So if you've had a season of your life, or you've had a couple of these, or you still resonate with some of them. Um, or you look back and go, oh, I used to be that way, but I, I've healed that. It does not mean that you're narcissistic, right? Um, we are looking for somebody that's getting most of these consistently. Now, there are some other traits that are associated with narcissistic personality disorder um, that aren't part of this criteria, but they're still discussed in the DSM. And the reason I think it's important that I touch on some of them is that because this is such a popular topic on social media, we toss a lot of words around, right? We'll see people say like, oh, if a person acts like this, they're a narcissist, or um, this behavior is associated with narcissism. And then people come in and say, no, that's not true because it doesn't match the criteria. But there's a little bit this gray area where... The research does support that we see some of these behaviors, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're narcissistic, but it is often exemplified. So if reading that criteria to you and you feel like you've known somebody that is narcissistic and you're like, oh, they don't really have any of those, there's more to it. So I'm going to go over those and talk about some of the things that we also see associated with NPD, okay? And then, and then we'll shift gears into traits. So um, some of the criteria here are things like they tend to be very charming. That's something we heard talk about a lot with narcissism is they tend to be very charming. Uh, this is not within the criteria, but what we do see within that is that they tend to be either good looking or they present really well or they look really affluent. They're very smooth or suave. Um, and with that can come love bombing, right? Um, so... Yeah, they're traits, but not narcissism. So someone can be charming and not a narcissist, but often narcissists are charming. So hopefully that helps you sort of separate this a little bit, okay? Um, another trait we commonly see is that they feel very owed. They're very entitled, but they feel owed. So often as they go through life, they get more and more angry that they haven't been given what they feel, feel owed. They haven't had that success or that breakthrough or made the money or had life turn out the way that they've wanted. Um, and it's very strong within them of this sense of injustice or unfairness that I haven't gotten what I'm owed, right? Uh, they, another very common criteria we see is that they will destroy the credibility of someone who fails them, right? So because of their 
sort of delusions of grandeur and the sense of entitlement, they tend to be people that want the best doctor, go to the best restaurants or wear the best clothes or, or whatnot, right? But if somebody doesn't meet their standard or fails them or treats them less than they think they deserve to be treated, we can see them switch and become um, very sort of attacking, right? This is where we hear terms like a smear campaign or they become very slanderous. They are people that will go write that review or make that complaint, even if it's false, which is kind of what can make them very dangerous people. Um, and so that is sort of a dark side of them that we see, not always, but they can have that. At the core of all of this, right, they have extremely fragile self-esteem. So their core self is very wounded. Um, people with narcissistic personality disorder come from a lot of trauma. I will talk on that. And their self-esteem is so fragile that they sort of create a persona to protect it. And that's the narcissist that we see. Um, but because their self-esteem is so fragile, they're often extremely insecure. They have impaired attachment styles um, and they can be very controlling or very jealous. They also are very easily triggered. Right. Um, and because it's so fragile, it's like imagine having a, a slight paper cut on your finger and somebody bumps it. That hurts and you might be reactive, but you're OK. Imagine having a very, very deep gaping wound and somebody pours salt in it. Right. The reaction is going to be much stronger and much bigger. They sort of live with that sort of wound in their inner being, which is what can make them so reactive. Right. Um, their relationships are very, very transactional. Um, kind of as we talked about, but with that, we can see cycles of abuse. So narcissistic people can be very abusive um, because they are looking at people as what they can get out of them. Um, and, and in this sort of objective sense, we can see that cycle of like love bombing to lure them in and then trying to hold it together with that eggshell phase and then big ruptures when they're triggered or something happens where they're not treated the way they think they deserve. Um, but if they still have use for that person, then they'll trip the cycle back up and start the love bombing all over again. So cycles of abuse can be really apparent with narcissistic people, but not always, right? Uh, they do not understand that their comments or actions can be hurtful due to that lack of empathy and that extreme self-focus. So they're sort of natural gaslighters, right? People often ask, like, do they know they're gaslighting? Are they doing it intentionally? Um, and the answer can kind of go either way, but because you have somebody who can't think about how you feel, can't put yourself in their shoes, don't really care if they hurt you, and their focus is always themselves, it becomes a sort of a natural unfolding for them to gaslight you. So they say something that hurts you, you are reactive to that and say something that hurts them. And their, all, their whole focus is about how you hurt them. So they will downplay or diminish or deny what they said to you, making you feel crazy and second guess your reality, which is gaslighting, right? Um, and then over-focus on that reaction, putting themselves as the victim and causing you to then you know feel bad for them. So that cycle is sort of really natural with them, not something they're always consciously aware of. It just lends itself to that sort of interaction because of the symptoms that they have, right? Um, they are very prone to ego injury because of that vulnerability in their self-esteem. But something that people fail to realize is that we tend to be internalizers or externalizers. Narcissists that are externalizers get a lot of focus because they can have bouts of rage, they can be very abusive, they can have a lot of disdain and defiance, they can have very defiant sort of counterattacks. Um, that's common with externalizers. But there are people that have NPD that are internalizers. So they're not violent um, or they don't show it or take it out on anybody else, they take it out on themselves, right? So they, behind closed doors, when no one's around and they're aware of that deep wounded core self, they will take it out on themselves. So they can leave, live sort of a really strong double life. Um, and we saw this sort of like with Ted Bundy, right? This presenting one way and totally different behind closed doors. Um, and he, obviously he externalized as well, but we saw 
accounts of him where he internalized and there was so much self-loathing and self-hate. Um, so, uh, and then the last two things that we see with narcissism, some of the criteria or some of the like attributes we see that isn't actual criteria is that their vocational functioning is often impaired. They tend to struggle to hold down jobs, right? That's because they don't take responsibility. They can't take feedback and they often won't pay their dues. They want to step right into the position of CEO. They don't want to start at the bottom and work their way up. Now, some people with narcissism are actually extremely successful, but they tend to not get there by very virtuous or ethical means. Um, but for everybody else, except for those sort of elite narcissists, we see them struggle to hold down. This is something they cycle through with some frequency, and that can also be said of their interpersonal relationships or their romantic relationships. Um, with narcissistic personality disorder, Substance use and anorexia are actually very common as well. Um, substance use is really prevalent with it, which kind of makes sense. They're sort of a tortured soul. Um, but a lot of people are caught off guard by the anorexia side. But those two are co-occurring with NPD quite frequently. The thing to know here, though, about narcissistic personality disorder is that it's actually really rare. It's on average, it's less than like 3% of the population. It ranges from like 1% to 6%, um, and 50 to 75% of them are male. Now, what we're learning as we're researching is that it can be more common than we realize. We have to study what it looks like in females. And of course, the biggest issue here is that they don't seek help, so it's really hard to get accurate numbers. But true narcissistic personality disorder is still very rare. Um, which is where the confusion comes in, because with all the talk we see on social media about narcissism, everybody feels like they've met one, but the chances of having met one are actually very, very rare, but that doesn't mean you haven't encountered somebody with narcissistic traits, right, which is what we're going to talk about. The, the biggest thing that I want people to know about narcissistic personality disorder is that they are not typically or inherently destructive or impulsive, or have like abandonment concerns like we'd see with borderline personality disorder, and they're not commonly aggressive or even deceitful, right? So we attribute a lot of really harsh judgments toward uh, this narcissistic persona that we talk about, but that's not always the case. We discussed that in the antisocial personality disorder, the sociopath session, right? Where we looked at like a lot of those more sinister uh, attributes are actually go towards somebody with antisocial personality disorder, not necessarily toward narcissism. There are people out there that are kind and contributing members of society that wouldn't hurt a fly that are that have narcissistic personality disorder. They have these delusions of grandeur. They think that there's somebody special. They think they're entitled and owed something, but they're not necessarily out there wreaking havoc or abusing people. Um, and I think that's important to keep in mind because of how we label. We want to be really careful with that, right? Um, so obviously it can be destructive and hurtful, but not always. And I say that because there are people out there that resonate with some of this criteria, but if we feel like that means we're just a terrible, evil person, we're going to be more hesitant to look at it because you can't change what you judge, right? So we want to remove some of the stigma. We want to remove some of this judgment and look at it for what the criteria says that it is so that we can sort of assess accurately. But when I talk about this, right, people already sort of have the questions of like, but what about all the people we know that seem narcissistic, right? That, that they don't seem to match this criteria, but like, you know, in other ways, they really seem like they are. This is where a discussion on narcissistic traits comes in, right? So we're going to separate narcissistic personality disorder, NPD, what we just discussed, right? That rare cluster B personality disorder that has all that criteria um, and narcissistic traits. 